Real Estate Investment Loan Closing Costs Part 1. Get ready because it's time to raise the stakes with real estate. Loan closing costs, referencing Investopedia, which is a place you can go to take a look at definitions and terms that are investment related. The loan closing costs are fees and charges in excess of the purchase price of the property due at the closing of a real estate transaction. So clearly there's going to be a lot of components within the process of the real estate transactions. There will be com closing costs that will be required and we're going to have to estimate what those closing costs will be when making the decision decision for a real estate transaction. So both buyers and sellers could be subject to various closing costs. Closing costs could include fees related to the origination and underwriting of a mortgage loan, real estate commissions, which is going to be a big one, taxes and insurance premiums, as well as title and record filing. They must be disclosed in advance by law to buyers and sellers and agreed upon before a real estate deal can be completed. So the typical closing costs, closing costs typically range around three to 6%. So you can kind of take that as a rough estimate and you want to think about where, what it might be in the area that you are looking at. So three to 6% of the home's purchase price, that is. Closing fees vary depending on your state, loan type, and mortgage lender. So once again, when you look at those closing fees, you may be able to narrow down what you expect them to be to get a closer estimate when you're making decisions based on the state loan type and mortgage lender. So it's important to pay close attention to these fees. Also note that just from a sales kind of strategy standpoint, when you're purchasing something that's less expensive, if I was to be purchasing something that's going to be costing less than $1,000 and they were to tack on, if I was to finance it in some way, fairly large fees, if they tacked on $100 fees, I would notice that quite easily given the fact that I'm purchasing something of $1,000 and the fees would be fairly high in relation to what I am purchasing. However, when you're purchasing something that's going to be larger in dollar amount, such as say a vehicle, for example, or in this case, of course, a home being much larger in dollar amount, you could put on fairly substantial fees and they look fairly small in comparison to the large purchase, even though, of course, they are still relevant to, to individuals. So what you want to do is pay close attention to those fees because they can be significant even though they look insignificant in comparison to the total home purchase and then possibly get a third party to take a look and do some comparing and contrasting of the different closing costs because again it's, it is generally worth the time to, to look into them in some detail, do some comparisons for them, get some advice about it. So a lender is required by law to provide you with a loan estimate within three business days after receiving your mortgage application. So they should give you an estimate up front. They should be able to give you a fairly good idea of what can be expected, even though they have not been finalized at that point. This document outlines the estimated closing costs and other loan details. Through these figures might fluctuate by closing day, there shouldn't be any big surprises. So they should be fairly good at this, uh, being able to estimate what the closing costs will be. Three business days prior to your closing, a lender needs to provide you with a closing uh, disclosure form. You should see a column showing the original estimate closing costs and final closing costs, as well as another column indicating the difference uh, if costs rose. So again, you should be able to see a comparison at that point in time once the costs are finalized saying, hey, look, this is what we estimated them to be. Here's what they actually were. And obviously, if you see costs that were on there, uh, that were not on the estimate, but were on there at a later point, then you may follow up with questions about those changes, about those differences. So once again, three business days prior to your closing, a lender needs to provide you with a closing disclosure form. You should see a column showing the original estimated closing costs and final closing costs at that point, as well as another column indicating the difference in the costs. So if you see new fees that were not on the original loan estimate, you'll notice uh, that your closing costs are significantly higher. If that's the case, if your closing costs are higher and or you have new fees that were not on there in the estimate, you want to ask for clarification with your lender and or real estate agent at that point in time. Closing costs, why do we need them? Why are the closing costs going to be a component? They seem to complicate, obviously, the, prop, the process here. But 
we're dealing with a complex process that have different individuals that are going to be involved. So they're going to be obviously an important and required part of the real estate transaction. So a real estate transaction is complex process and has many players involved and many moving parts. Some states and some, some loan products require certain inspections beyond the basic inspection for which directly pay a home inspector of your choice. So there might be fees that are required depending on the state requirements and locations that are above and beyond possibly other locations. So obviously some of these charges will be dependent on um, your circumstances, including the location. Then there are property and transfer taxes, as well as insurance coverage and various additional fees that will be included as well. Types of fees with closing costs. We're gonna go over some of the types of fees here. We're gonna go into them in a little bit more detail, just give them a little bit more description and a few following presentations. So all of the closing costs should be uh, itemized on your loan estimate and closing disclosure. Some standard fees could include, we're just gonna list them out here. We'll talk about them in a little bit more detail in following presentations. So we have the application fee. Now, again, remember, as we look at these, these are possible type of closing costs and the actual closing costs could be dependent on circumstances, including you know the location and so on of your particular real estate transaction. But they could include, and these are gonna be in order, just in alphabetical order, not by say the most expensive type of closing costs first, simply alphabetical order. So application fee, we have the attorney fee, closing fee, courier fee, credit report fee, escrow deposit, uh, FHA mortgage insurance premium, flood determination and monitoring fee, homeowners association transfer fee, homeowners insurance, lenders title insurance, lead lead based paint inspection points, owners title insurance, uh, origination fee, pest inspection, prepaid daily interest charges, premium mortgage insurance, PMI, property appraisal fee, property taxes, rate lock fee, real estate commissions, recording fee, survey fee, tax monitoring and tax status uh, research fee, title search fee, transfer tax, underwriting fees, VA funding fee. So those are just a list of some of the fees you might have. Again, just simply in alphabetical order. You want to be able to make sure that you're getting uh, some advice on what the closing fees would be in your particular circumstance, comparing and contrasting those closing fees. And we'll talk a little bit about more of them uh, in a bit more detail, this list of items in a little bit more detail in future presentations.